Hello, and welcome everybody to the Chuck Stew Show Season 3. I am your host with the most, Chuck Stew. And right now, uh, actually two weeks ago, I filmed, or per se recorded, an hour's worth of talking for the episode of Episode 2 that we were going to use for after the show. But because of problems in scheduling and different things that we've been having problems with lately with me and the doctor, this episode is just only going to include me for season two. So strap in, I recorded an hour's worth of a segment called the After Hour segment that's actually going to be just the show by itself. So here we go, this it is, or here, for all you listener, listeners out there that love our show, here you go. going into the first part of the show that is a 28 minute and 30 second segment. Sorry about that peeps and peepettes, the Chuck Stewians. Uh, there was a knock on the door because um, one of my girlfriend's roommates, my friend, got his package from UPS. Oh, God, fucking phone. Well, my phone went off, so I owe you a Hornsby. So if you ever see me anywhere in town, or if you come up to me and say, oh, hey, your phone went off. That's You said that's the rule for your show. You owe me a Hornsby, okay? And if you listen to my show a lot and you hear the phone go off a lot, then I owe you a six-pack of Hornsby. The orange or the green, whichever one you want. I'll even throw in Strongbow. Anyways, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's kind of like an inside joke. Oh, well, this is the after hours with Chuck Stew, even though it's in the middle of the show. So that's my story. Anyways, 
just I've been sick, and it's just been really, man, it's just been really weird lately. I've just been really, like, not feeling good certain hours of the day, then I'm feeling okay certain hours of the day, and then sometimes, like, I mean, right now I'm all shaky because I got one of those super large Starbucks drinks. I got the caramel frappuccino with the swirl that's, you know, um, you know the shit you put on top of it I forgot and uh, yeah I mean now I'm shaking and the the back of my throat is still sore it's still swollen but it doesn't hurt when I swallow which is weird and I'm getting two different answers I mean my face hurts I get pressure on my face pressure on my nose I can't breathe without two different medications Claritin and Nasonex and so um half the people I talk to about this because this is now day 8 and I know it's not strep throat for a fact because I don't have a fever I don't, I get hot here and there like hot flashes but I think that would have to do more with a cold and that's happened before while I had allergies and my throat got swollen 3, 4 weeks ago and then it went down after a week so I'm thinking it's probably just going to go down by itself and something went in bloom in Tucson something went in bloom you know, just red bump, red spots, not bumps, but red spots in the back of my throat. It's just, you know, it just sucks. I'm, I'm just, I'm so tired of feeling sick. But I've been sick for, the one time I was sick for three weeks, almost four weeks, and I had to go get antibiotics. And then it worked, and then like three days later I was fine. I was all cured up. I'm going to wait another two weeks, and or not two weeks, a week and a half. And if I'm still sick like this, I'm just going to go to Walgreens and just go see one of their doctors tell my look I don't think it's strep throat I'm pretty sure it's not strep throat because I can walk and talk usually fine I can go to work and talk for the most fine for the most part I do get you know painful like sticks in the back of my throat or sharp pains here and there but for the most part I can still swallow and eat and I do have an appetite things like that so you know that's just what's been going on with uh, Chuck Stu's world you know right now just uh, not been feeling too good, but I'm in Phoenix. Uh, it's the 16th uh, for our next episode of the Chuck Stew Show. Nobody has complained. Like I was saying before, the guy came out with the package. Nobody has really complained uh, because no one watches our show, <laughs> which is fine. I, I, the reason as to why we make these episodes is to drive to and from Phoenix. That's why. That's why we make these. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Excuse me again. Uh, so. And uh, I was thinking, you know, we got to take a break from, because for the last, okay, so we haven't made Chuck Stewart about maybe two weeks, and so Dr. Book wanted to take a break, because usually we take about three, four weeks, sometimes a month break, every time we release a season of our show, or a podcast, or whatever, and also, we do that with mixtapes, or we make full, full full-length CDs, once we get to our goal, we will take a break for about a month, like three weeks to a month. It just depends on, you know, if inspiration hits or whatever. Well, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, now we're in season three. This is episode two. Past a year now, because it started back in June, back when I got the first episode, I actually got alcohol poisoning. I don't know if anybody, like, knows that. Chuck's two trivia right there. I felt so bad, I literally thought I was going to die. And I probably should have, because I woke up, I woke up that night at like 3.30, 4 in the morning, something like that, when I was living at my old apartment after the first episode of the Chuck Stew Show because me and the book actually didn't have any money to spare that weekend for booze, but we wanted to drink, and we'd had um, Irish car bombs, I believe, the week before, so what we did was we, um, we just made them again, but we mostly just kept taking liquor shots with Dr. Pepper also. Like, we would... Um, we would take a shot of something, the chase with Dr. Pepper, so I don't even, I lost count on how many shots I actually took. I'm going to say somewhere around, we probably took about 15 shots each. I'm just going to throw that, you know, that curveball, you know, right to the catcher, throwing it. I'm not really sure, like, if that's a, if that's a proper number, but it sounds like it's something around there. I literally woke up and there was vomit on my leg and, like, on my shirt, and I have absolutely no recollection of vomiting. So I could have choked on my own vomit. It could it, it could have happened. 
and I'm incredibly grateful, you know, to God that I didn't die. So, anyways, when I'm sick again, we did the chugs too. Uh, well, me and the doctor were both sick, I think, at the start of season two. But then, anyways, back to my original point, we were making episodes that were two and a half hours long. And so this is not new for us because back when we first started with our very first podcast, back when we were working on the Jow Central number one record, you know, but when we were playing instruments and everything, we decided to do a, po- a political podcast back then um, before Project came out. Our friend Project, um, who's uh, in school to become a firefighter, he's learning fire science. He actually came up with the name The Chuck Stew Show, which is a play on words of my middle name, my last name. But uh, before that, we actually called, it was the extreme left-wing liberal show, and it was called uh, The Sean Stuckey Show. We had three episodes, and I believe the third episode was like 14 hours long, because we just kept, uh, the, the, we just kept the audacity, just, it just kept on going. So, I mean, uh, yeah, so it's not new to us to do these long episodes, but I figured, I mean, why not just... You know, continue drinking on Friday because I kept telling myself, man, um, I'm going to have to tell the doctor, like, look, dude, we're going to have to both go to AA. i got to stop drinking. I want to take a break for a month. I'm not feeling good. I mean, you know, I'm sick again. I'm having really bad acid reflux. But actually, to tell you the truth, for the Chuck Stewians out there, I'm actually doing okay because for the last couple of days, I actually have not had any heartburn. And I believe it's because I've actually changed up my eating habits. I'm actually eating somewhat more healthier now you know for lunch instead of um cooking those really bad hungry man meals or going out to get um you know let's see well actually last night i had a really bad meal a jack in the box last night that ain't too good but the last two days last three days um i've been having salads for lunch and i've actually cut down on drinking milk and i've cut down on drinking soda i'm actually at the the acid reflux actually um i've only had one bad bout of it I woke up like two in the morning and I could feel like really bad. That was a couple days ago, but I think the last two or three days I haven't had it. So back to drinking, I guess, <laughs> you know, back to the liquor. But I'm thinking, you know, it's good to have these 30 minute episodes. And the last episode was really, really fucking crazy. Maybe we should just go back to the two hour episodes because I need, you know, it's just, I do it for myself to make these episodes. I need to have something to listen to. I'm driving up to and from Phoenix. Um, you know, I'm not saying I just, I, I'm not like a narcissist. I just, what I like to do is I, because I, you know, I actually, I don't, I would consider that I actually don't drink as much as I used to. I actually think that drinking has been cut down for the most part since uh, back when I was with my ex, what was like three, four years ago, because I've been drinking for about four years now. I mean, I'm, uh, you know, I'm still a somewhat of a young man, but I'm just saying that I, I, I wasn't like some people that do start, at like some people start at age 15, some people start at 16, you know, some people like to start drinking once they get into college, so they'll, they'll start drinking at like 18. Uh, both me and the doctor started pretty, pretty late when it comes to, you know, hitting back on the weekends. We started pretty late. I'm going to say it was, um, let's see, what was it? Yeah, 24, actually. And he started when he was 23. So that's pretty late in life to... I mean, that's the point in life where my barber was saying, you know, a lot of people want to start winding down and calming down at the age of 23, 24. You know, with a, when he was saying with a lot of people, they just want, you know, they don't want to do drugs anymore. They don't want to, you know, be crazy and do crazy things and... You know, basically try to wind down and settle down and have a family. A lot of people do that at the age of 23 to 24. And I think the main age of people in the Western world, at least in our country, I saw a statistic last week where it said that most people like to get married and settle down at the age of 26. Um, I'm two years after that, even though I bill myself as 47 on the show so I can, you know, get the people who really listen to our show, you know, the elderly citizens. Just throwing that out there. But... Yeah, so that's that's what I'm saying. Um, a lot of people like to do that, and I've been thinking I've been thinking about that for myself too. Like, when it when is it going to be okay to start cooling down and just 
relax. Like, I just, I have that fighter, never give up spirit. I just, I, I rebel against everything. And, you know, but it's, it's just, it's getting to the point in my life where it's like, maybe it's just time to settle down. I remember, I remember, I was standing in line at, at a Fry's. And this was last month. I was standing in line because my dad said, oh, Fry's is hiring for their produce section. You should go apply. So I did. And I seriously waited on my feet for over two hours just trying to get an interview because so many people came in to try to get this job. Even my old boss's assistant was there, and I hung out with him and his friend, the guy who basically trained me on everything and at the place I used to work at when I was doing produce. And, uh, you know, it's just like, um, it, it's just a thing where it kind of dawned on me. It's like, well, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, I got the fighter, war, Chuck Stu's got the warrior spirit. But I was thinking to myself, you know, do I really want to keep rebelling like this? Like, I already tried to yeah, stop, I mean, yeah, I did yeah, try yeah. to stop my rap career back when I was doing produce. You know, doing the Chuck Stu, well, I think it was like mid season, uh, season two. I, you know, I told Dr. Book, look, I don't want to rap anymore. I just want to focus on making jazz music. And that only lasted about a month, and now we're back to making rap music again. I, I was only, I, I retired a second time, and the retirement only lasted three weeks. But, or no, less than four weeks, four weeks, less than a month. So, you know, I mean, I was, I just remember I was standing in line, and, you know, this is way over. I'm now at 15 minutes, fuck it. We'll just go. I'll just tell the dog, let's just go back to two hours, two and a half hours. You know, it's just, we're not making it for anybody but ourselves, for us to listen to, so, you know, fuck it. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying, just to reiterate really quick, I'm not saying that for Chuck Stew to only listen to the Chuck Stew show, I mean, that is sounds narcissistic. I listen to, my favorite podcast is the Stone Cold Podcast, I just listened to that with Ted Fowler last night. And it was really good. I, I The last time I came down from Phoenix, I believe it was two weeks ago, when I was driving my girlfriend back here to Phoenix, we uh, shopped, and then I was driving back, and I go, oh, my God, I felt like shit that day. But, um, well, that's what happens when you don't eat. But, you know, that reminds me, said, Chuck, you got to eat. But eat healthy. But uh, anyways, and I listened to the entire podcast of when Pat Patterson was on there. And it was, you know, it was really interesting. Like, and I try to listen to the Ross report. It's just not really my thing. I love Jim Ross as an announcer. He's like, he's my second all-time favorite. But I just, as a podcast, I'm just, I'm just not really like all that into it. But, um, hey, maybe I might start listening again. And then I really, really like, uh, I now listen to a new podcast. I've been listening while I go to work. Uh, the Ben Shapiro Show, I've been listening to that on uh, YouTube. I try to listen to the Taz Show, even though it's like not really, I listen to one where Bull Dempsey came on, but it's not, it's not really that good. He's, he was never really a good color commentator. He's not on his podcast, just kind of like, Ugh. so I don't really listen. And you have to like pay extra to listen to this show. I'm like, nah. So, uh, and Milo the Yiannopoulos show, I've probably listened to all of his episodes, all like 30-something episodes. I've listened to them all, all the different clips. I just listened to the dangerous. I, as I was coming up here, before the Stone Cold Podcast with Ted Fowler, I listened to like half of it. Before that, I listened to the hour and a half special of the Dangerous Faggot Tour. <laughs> uh, if, uh, excuse the language there. Uh, no, no, excuse the language. Fuck you. So, uh, kill yourself. Here's why. Dangerous Faggot Tour and was at Texas Tech. See? And so I, I listened to actually a lot of different podcasts. Um, I was thinking about listening, you know, checking out Shaquille O'Neal's podcast, but, you know, I tried to get the basketball last night. I bought a Phoenix ball a Phoenix Suns basketball, and then, you know, uh, my friend, because Dr. Doctor Book, he's really into the NBA, but I'm just, it lasts for like a month and fell off again. I'm more of a violent sport guy. If anybody, you know, if you want to know the, the sports I watch, it's pro wrestling, um, even though not, not that much anymore. I can't stand Raw and SmackDown and that shit, even the pay-per-views are like, oh, fucking god-awful. I like NXT a lot. I really like NXT. Um... I like independent shit. Don't really like TNA, but uh, I like New Japan Pro Wrestling. I like, you know, I'm just, I'm a wrestler's wrestler. I'm a smart, what they call smart mark. Um, ECW is like my all-time favorite in the Attitude Era. Those are both my all-time favorites. But I don't really watch wrestling that much anymore, but I watch pro wrestling. 
I watch the NFL every season. I watch it with my dad. I'm going to watch uh, all the – I'm try to – well, I can't watch all the games because I'm going to be on the road Sunday. But uh, I watch all the recaps, and I love – I fucking love fighting. Like, MMA, especially early UFC with the tournament style. We're, uh, me and the book are uh, – Probably next week we're going to be buying Ultimate Ultimate Brazil. It's Ultimate Ultimate 3. I forgot which one's like number fucking 27 or some shit. I don't remember. I'm watching them all in order. With that. Also, I try to buy other promotions. Anyways, that's, um, so that's what I, that's what I like. And, uh, oh, God, this fucking, ugh. Damn, my RGs. Anyways. There was another point I was going to make about something I said earlier before, but now I don't remember what it is. So, uh, oh, the fries. Okay, fries. So, that's what I was, that's, that's what I was also saying. Um, I was standing at the fries. I was in a business suit, business casual, not a suit with a tie or anything, but like business casual. I dress how I dress at my job now. And, you know, it's just, I remember I was just standing there for like two hours and I was thinking to myself, dude, like, maybe it's just time to stop the whole nomad bullshit. It's like, yeah, I understand that most, if not all of the people on my side, on my dad, mom and dad's, both sides of the family, especially on my dad's side, my dad is the only one who's actually held a full-time job at any point in his life, and he's been a tax consultant, you know, Monday through Friday, sometimes Monday through Sunday, where he'd only have one day off a week. You know, I remember that growing up as a kid, you know, because of tax season. And at one time, he had three different fucking jobs, but... Um, I, just, I don't know how the fuck he did that. Anyways, so, you know, Big Rich um, has worked, I think, 34 years doing taxes. So, and my barber, he was telling me, he was like, oh, I own this shop. and been cut. He was like, I've been cutting hair since your dad was a kid. He said, uh, just this shop alone I've had for 16 years. I was like, oh, my God. I can't even think of anybody who's held a job, including myself, longer than six fucking months. Like Dr. Book. Um, you know, he's on college again. He's actually been uh, uh, staying at the same job for, what, he's been there about a little over a year now. So, you know, kudos to him. You know, reason to toast a glass to him. And I think I actually know the reason why, as, as to why he stayed at the job longer than four freaking months, is because he got a divorce. His druggy ex-wife was making him do things he didn't want to do, and, you know, he doesn't call out every single fucking week now, like, when his, uh, when his ex-wife was making him do that, like, oh, yeah, well, whatever, let's go do this, let's go do drugs, and, you know, you don't need to go to work, fuck it, let's just get, you just get another job, like, you know, it's, I was thinking to myself, you know, this nomad thing, I understand that a lot of my family members are gypsies, now, you know, like, not like gypsy gypsies, like, you know, in the, Europe, but gypsies, like, you know, nomads, they just, they just wander from place to place, you know, they just go to different places, they experience different things, they only hold jobs between four to six months, and then they quit the job, just move to a different state, my grandfather was like that, on my mother's side, he would just randomly, he would build up dry cleaning businesses, he had like, he had like three of them, and after like a couple years, he would just, one day he would just snap or something, even though he was really good at being a salesman, and he would just drive from Indiana to California without even telling my mother and her, uh, her other family members, like her sisters, so, and his wife, so, uh, you know, a lot of my family members do that, a lot, they're like, oh yeah, I'm in California now, come on, like, I already shut down the business, let's make a new one. Like, you know, it's just very self-destructive behavior in both sides of the family. But, you know, that's just, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily know if it's a mindset, is it a generational thing, is it a thing of a waning of the heart, where you just, after six months, you're just like, dude, fuck it, I want to leave, even if, it's job, even if it's a job that's really nice and good. Like, I mean, I was working at that grocery store, I was only there for four and a half months, but actually, that that's different because I didn't get I didn't quit that one. I got I pretty much got pushed to get fired because my asshole boss at the time would not give me hours, and that was that that was not my fault. So you know nobody could put blame on me for that. You know, saying oh you're chumps, you're just lazy. 
relaxed man. I try to be Mr. Mellow Yellow. On the show, you're seeing something completely different, because with me and the doctor, you're seeing something very violent. It's very, you know, counterculture. Everybody's very polite, and you can't use words, you know, like lame or handicap or, like, you know, politically correct. And we're like, you know, the old ECW product with Paul Heyman. We're right up in your face. We just, we say what we say, and we don't give a shit. So we're actually purposely going to try to get ourselves banned because of the whole monetization thing where a lot of videos and people's channels are getting pulled now because YouTube has had enough with the crazy unholy shenanigans, you know, all over the website, you know. So... We're actually going to purposely try to get ourselves banned. And it's, it's, I'm sure, like Buck was actually saying for our season, you know, we end of season two, now season three, we're going to have a five-minute segment called the What the Buck segment with Buck Stri DJ Buck Strickland. And so he was saying because there isn't a popularity problem that we can try to get ourselves pushed off the air and it's not going to work because we need to have an audience first in order for that to happen. So... That's what I was, uh, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking that, so. I was thinking they're just going to come find and ban us anyways because we do have a lot of episodes online. You know, there are some missing, and we do have some lost episodes that are uploaded. I believe in season two, there's like four, there's like three or four episodes missing for some reason, even though they've all been recorded, but it, though all those episodes were on my old computer, and that old computer was a Windows X8 or something, and all the boys at Best Buy and all the people I, you know, saw online that were writing about were saying, like, it's, it's a completely shit computer. It's only going to last three years and it's going to completely shit out on you. I didn't know it at the time. Nobody explained it to me at Best Buy at the time back in 2012. You know, egg on my face. Like, egg goes on my face, I guess. So, I mean, I don't know if it's, that's a Chuck Stoop type of thing. It's to fuck up like that. I don't know. So... Anyways, back to the Nomad thing. You know, just hearing me go hooping and hollering and rambling. Anyways, so I was telling myself, you know what? Maybe it is finally time to settle down. At least try to settle down. I don't know if my body, my mind, my heart, and, you know, my ass, my fucking balls, my dick are going to agree to do this. But because I think... I don't, I, like I was saying a second ago, I don't know if a, the nomad is a thing of the, if it's a way of the heart, if it, 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 if it's a way of the heart, or a way of the mind, or if it's a cultural thing, or you get raised to do this in your family, like, so it's, it, it becomes something in your mind that, like, tells you you have to do the same, it's kind of like an addiction, I don't, I don't know really how this works with nomads and, people that are drifters, I, I don't get that, or actually wouldn't really bother me all that much, it's the problem that fucking bothers me is not having money, I fucking cannot stand not having money, I hate being broke, I hate that shit, so, especially, especially hate it because I was rich, I was like filthy fucking rich like two years ago, so, you know, how the fuck, anyways, that was Chuck Stu's two cents, think about the moments. Think about how exactly this works. Think about Dr. Book here and uh, his ways of doing and thinking about things. You know, think of a little man. Think of Chuck Stew. I'm starting to get a headache, so I'm going to have to put this phone down and we'll just have to pick this up with the doctor. Um, I'm actually going to be, uh, today's Friday, the 16th, and I'm going to be gone. Um, let's see, till next week or er, Sunday. So. Actually, the episode's probably not going to get uploaded till next Friday. Can't really say that anybody's going to be disappointed or, like, shooting emails in or, like, shooting shit on Twitter or saying, oh, how can we go? You guys said you, it's always going to be on Saturdays. You guys said it, new episode every Saturday. What happened? You know, nobody's going to say that because even, even after, you know, we're starting our third season and have, what, like, this is episode number, like, Third, like this is episode with the lost episodes counting. This is episode I think 37 or something, 38, something like that. Like we still don't have a fucking fan base, so nobody's gonna care if this shit gets uploaded later. 
It was like when I was trying to do my Christian podcast of Death Church Radio, and I was also trying to do one C two R podcast on the Christian radio, and nobody gave a fuck, so I quit doing it. It's just I, I don't want to spend time working really, really hard on something like that where nobody's watching when I can work really hard at a job and and I get money for it. I rather would do that, you know, because at least I'm making some. Even though I'm not, I'm not a materialist. I wouldn't say materialistic. I just Orange prefer. Beef. I don't even like money that much. I just prefer to have, you know, a payoff for working. I fucking hate working really hard on something and then nothing comes of it. Like, it used to really, really bother me when me and the doctor, Dr. Pearl Houston Book, would make these mixtapes or full-length albums like two years ago. We'd release them. And then I would try to tell everybody about them, and, like, nobody gave a shit. I, it's like, okay, well, I worked all, you know, worked really hard for no fucking reason. Like, I hate that shit. So, writing's different, because that's my main thing. Writing, you know, I've released, I've released three books. I technically wrote, like, fucking ten or eleven of them. I just, but eight of them are, lo- like, I've tried to write seven unfinished novels, but all those are lost. But, um, three of them have been published you know, released from Create Space Publishing. Um, that's a, that's completely different. I, I don't care if I get an audience that much of that because I need a vent. And the best way I vent is, well, I mean, I vent on the show, but the best way I vent is by writing poems and short stories and, you know, chapters for a novel that, you know, that that's, that's how I, that's going to come out regardless of if people read it or not. So, anyway, this has been Chuck's two after hours. We're at the 27 minute mark. Um, fuck it, Stone Cold's podcast goes from an hour to an hour and 30 minutes. And I did release that statement on Twitter. I don't know if anybody read it saying, well, we got to make the Death Search Radio thing a 30 minute podcast because I just don't have time, which is true with my job. I, I have time, but I don't because I'm actually, I'm, I'm working hard at this job, but I'm actually working to become a full time agent. I'm actually going to be going, I'm going to try to go in six days a week from now on. To get you know because we're not making enough fucking money so so everything's always a financial problem <laughs> anyways this has been chuck stew you need to stay straight keep it real keep it wild and hey if we do get banned we may get really popular so you know youtube and you fucking liberal bullshit suck on that here is the second part of the chuck stew show that is a 30 minute segment and this is what we're going to be ending the show with so check it out welcome back everybody from commercial break next day actually this is your boy your second boy with all the AKAs because the first boy got a bunch of AKAs himself this is your call me cool Biden now Mr. AKA Chuck Stu and Chuck Stu man he's just been sitting here he's been he's been not doing that much the uh, last couple days you know, I just work, nah, actually, last week was actually pretty easy, I didn't work that hard, but, you know, I took a nap, I just woke up like a half hour ago, now I'm watching Menace to Society, and I'm watching Food Paradise going back and forth, but, um, I'm just, um, you know, just kicking it, you know, just relaxing, you know, not really doing much, I'm just, um, there really wasn't that much really to do today. I mean, I didn't, I just went up the street a couple hours ago. I think I went at like 1.30 or 2. It's 5 o'clock now. Uh, my girlfriend doesn't get home, get home from work with um, one of her karaoke friends that's going to be driving her home until about 6, 15, 6, 20. So I still got another hour, about an hour and a half to wait. Um, yeah, I really didn't do that much today. I uh, just kind of lazy, just being lazy, you know, trying to watch TV, but there was that knob of my cat from hell. And, you know, Chuck's do, you know, I ain't going to put on Fox News or anything, watch the O'Reilly Factor. Justice was Judge Janey or the fucking Garfield show. But, you know, Chuck's do is just, just very hungry right now. I went up the street and I got a slice of pizza and I got some, and I got a salad with some vinaigrette sauce. It was just that. Eh, I, I, you know, your boy only fucks with the ranch. Sometimes I'll fuck with the blue cheese now when I used to never fuck with it. But, you know, Chuck's dude is just one of those guys 
that, you know, he's got to eat all day because I don't eat that much. I don't eat that much in one meal. I just kind of eat here and there, but I'll eat like six or seven times a day when most people either eat like three times to three big meals and maybe some snacks. And um, Dr. Book, actually, he only eats one meal a day for dinner, but when he eats dinner, he eats hell of food. Like, he, you know, really big feast type of thing. You know, so that's just how his body's designed. But my body's designed, to, I eat every two hours, but I only eat a little bit. Same with the drinks, too. I had a really big coffee this morning, but I was just, re- I was still really tired. I took a nap. Um, I don't know, I don't remember what the hell I was talking about in the last segment. But, you know, there's just ain't, you know, it's just, it's, it's what I like to do, I guess. You know, I don't really have a choice right now for the next six months or five and a half months. I don't really have a choice coming, excuse me, coming down here to, um, coming down here to Phoenix. But uh, Chuck Stu, he's getting really bored here. I mean, I've been going through a dry spell with writing for shit like this whole year, even though I've been writing a lot. I wrote a lot this year, but, and, you know, the year ain't over yet. I mean, we still got another, what, like two and a half, three and a half months? Three, let's see, it's, it's September 16th, so, okay, yeah, so we got three more months until 2017. I wrote a lot this year, but my God, my God has it been, it's, it's been, it's been fairly difficult. I'll just put it like that. It's been fairly difficult to, um, have to, uh, you know, just be writing this year. I wrote the first book in, what, 2012, the, pro, the first published one, and then I wrote a, you know, a second one, which is a full-length poetry book, and then the one last year, it was like 47 poems, or 48 poems, something like that, uh, with like six short stories, you know, 132 pages, so it's almost a full length, and, you know, so this year it's going to be uh, two books, and I'm just um, writing you know, I'm just trying to write a bunch of haikus. I was thinking about, you know, converting some of my poems and short stories that I've written this year into haiku form. So I got to have more haikus. I'm going to have 200 by December. And then that's fucking it, dude. So, like, it's just been difficult trying to write. And Chuck Steele, you know, anyone wants to really focus on the podcast right now because it's just so easy. And it's, I do not see this at work at all especially if we're recording at my place on Friday nights or Saturday nights, especially on Friday when we have, like, I got, like, at least four drinks in me, and then we just turn it on, and we can just have a show for, like, two and a half hours. It's it's literally, like, the easiest, it's the easiest and funnest job I've ever had uh, making the Chuck Sue show. Even, be, you know, even going so far as to record NXT, and then we watch it on, a, you know, the weekly series and react to it and talk, and then we'll listen to it react to the wrestlers and whatnot. So, that's really fun, too. You know, that, that season two, that's, like, all we were doing for, like, ten freaking episodes was ten weeks of NXT and just reacting to them and calling the matches. It's fun. It's fun, and it's so freaking easy. Anyways, but, you know, American Alpha moved up the ranks. Uh, the Revival's still there, which is pretty good, and they got some other, you know, pretty good wrestlers. Anyways, so, and we also were acting to Fight Night with, um, what was it, uh, like the old UFC tapes, and then we were watching new UFC matches, and you know stuff they got on, the, like the UFC unloaded. They got on Hulu. We were betting on that, betting on video games. You know, just a whole bunch of different stuff. But mostly we were watching wrestling. And it was just so freaking, fucking, freaking easy. It's seriously like the easiest job. I could, like, I would never have to take a break from something like this, from making the Chuck Stew episodes. Anyways, I was saying yesterday that the reason as to why I make them is uh, to come up when I come to and from Phoenix once every two weeks, or once, sometimes, well, now it's been once a month, um, you know, I'd like to listen to that, anyways, so, you know, it's just, that's gonna be it for writing, folks, um, I, I gotta take a really long break from writing, I will, next year, for 2017, a book will not come out, so I'm just gonna release two this year, and it should you know, make up for next year, but I, you know, I tried to write my eighth, what was it, like, eighth novel, I tried to write it, you know, just, not into it, boy, not into it, I just can't do it, I may do a re-release of the first book that'll come out, like, the end of next year, like, 
I was thinking about re um, doing a second edition of Cut My Sky Out, but everything, all the grammar and all the pages and everything is like completely fixed up. I was thinking of like doing a re-release of that, make an edition two, but um, you know, because Walt Whitman, one of my idols for writing poetry, he um, only wrote 400 poems his whole life, at least that of, of what we know of that's been technically published. So, you know, the man, you know, technically the man published um, uh, Leaves of Grass, and there's a bunch of versions of Leaves of Grass, Leaves of Grass, and those 400 poems, but through his entire lifetime, he kept revising and rewriting those same 400 poems over and over again to, like, perfect them. And I sort of do the same thing, like, I'll, like, um, I think two out of the three books that I've written or uh, ones I didn't release actually kind of have that some of them are the same poems or just written better and I've like heavily edited it. Yeah, the, the, because the last book, like I think 15 of the like 48 or 20 of the 48 poems that I've written were actually uh, remastered poems. So I just took poems from my very first book called The Beginning, which was the first hundred poems. That one you people will never see. So, you know, maybe if I lay on my deathbed and uh, my brother or my girlfriend Nancy doesn't burn up all my poems like, what I, you know, what Emily Dickinson asked of her sister to do, but instead she published the poetry. Anyways, um, that's the only way you guys are going to see him because as long as I'm alive, no one's going to see that fucking book. I, I just honestly believe writing from that, a couple of poems made it into a couple of the books, remastered and rewritten. But um, to make them better, but to see the original 100 poems, you guys are not going to see them because they're fucking terrible. Like, they're really bad. I, I, my shit ain't selling now. It definitely ain't going gonna, ain't gonna to sell if the, if the beginning comes out. The one that was written in, I think I finished it in, like, fucking 2008 or 2009. It took, I think it took four, four and a half years to write that book. And, um, no, you ain't seen it. You ain't seen it, so... That's, that's coming from Chuck's, too. I mean, you may see it from somebody else uh, when, when I'm dead, like fucking 80 years from now, so you may see it then. But, you know, my thing was um, I'm always going to, you know, release a book. Every year a book's going to come out. And it was going to be poetry compilation, short story, novel. Poetry, short story, novel. And I was going to go like that in that order. And then I was actually going to um, be releasing a 300 haiku collection book of haikus. So it's going to be poetry, regular poetry, or my version of it, regular poetry, haiku, um, short story, novel, and then poetry, short story, novel. That's what I was going to do. It was all released as big books, but it's just, you know, you make a plan and God laughs. That's kind of how this worked out, because my first one was a chat book, 48 pages of sermons from the book of Philippians, a breakdown of Philippians, and like seven or eight poems which is not even a fucking book. I don't know what I was thinking with that. It was That book is terrible. And then the second one came out, The Circus of Pain, The Flailing Body Parts Poems, my first full-length poetry book. It was 100 poems plus seven bonus poems because um, when I wrote the bonus poems, at the time I, when I was living at Camino Seco Village, I was um, the, the 100 poems were already finished by the time it was time for it to come out, but I think I still had like a month or a um, month like two months before I was actually going to release it. I got, I think I got it finished before Halloween. So I was still, I was still in a, I was in a big funk at the time because of my divorce. So I was still just writing just to get those feelings out. And so I ended up writing seven more poems that I really liked that I didn't rip up or throw away or flush down the toilet. That's one of my things that I also do. I did it at work and I do it at home at the, you know, the, at the place I work at the call center if I really don't like the poem, or I'll, sometimes I'll purposely write a poem, excuse me, I'll purposely write a poem, and then I'll crumple it up, I'll throw it in the garbage, and I'll pour Gatorade on it, or I'll pour my drink on it, and then when I come to work the next day, the, you know, the the, uh, the bin was, or the garbage was taken care of, and it's new garbage can, or new garbage wrapping, you know, trash paper thing, you know what I'm talking about, anyways, so it was 107 poems, so 100 poem collection, then seven bonus at the end of the book. And then the one last year, 
that came out last year, um, late November, when it was supposed to be Christmas, um, was uh, like six short stories, and then it was like 40, 40, 47 or 48 poems, like something like that. This one was actually supposed to be 35 short stories. That was my plan, to write 35 short stories by December. We got three months, two and a half months left until December, and I have ultimately finished six short stories. I'm not even fucking close. I'm not even, that's not even 20%, I'm not even close. So I'm gonna be releasing, I'm gonna be releasing 14 short stories where like six of them, or six or seven are like finished. I'm pretty sure it's only six are finished. And then the other ones are all unfinished. So I'm gonna be releasing that as the first book. I already calculated it out. It's gonna be um, 60 pages for the chat book. And then I'm gonna release 200 haikus because that's gonna be really easy to write. Um, so I'm gonna convert a lot of my poems to haiku form, and I'm gonna be writing haikus at work, and then while I'm not at work, I'll go down to the uh, Pagan Coffee House and write, I'm gonna write two haikus a day, you know, already, uh, you know, I just, I'm just gonna try to push forward, just chug it along. You know, Chuck Stew is gonna be releasing two books at once. The first one's gonna be called, um, gee, okay. Knee deep, but no, that's a poem. Um, it's gonna the the short story collection is gonna be called Yeshua is Away in Paradise Eve. Call back tomorrow, a uh, short story collection, and then the dual book I'm gonna be re releasing. Um, so far, what I have, it's most like it's subject to change, but most likely it's gonna be called um, um, Alone in the Temperature Zone of Dumb Agony Haiku Collection. So. Two books are going to come out at once. Like two dual, I like, you know how some artists come out with CDs where it's like two dual albums. So, you know, Trent Reznor has done that a bunch of times. And, um, you know, I think, the, well, the last time I bought a dual disc was All Eyes on Me by Tupac. That shit was like 27 bucks. It was hell expensive. And uh, anyways, so I'm going to be doing that. And next year, once it hits December, or once it hits January 1st, I'm just gonna, you know, slap my hands together and say that's it because I was also gonna try to write a, I was trying to write a novel this year also called Zirconian Skies, um, kind of a mix of real life, like slice of life mixed in with sci-fi horror, like creepypasta, and that just didn't, it came out really well for the first like 23 or 24 pages, but then I just couldn't do it and I also have another um, I have another novel that I was actually writing while I was crafting um, My Child Face Bleeds Like Mad Sonnets. I was actually writing, that was supposed to be, an, originally supposed to be a novel that I got up to 54 pages and it was originally called Me Inside, but um, that one never got finished and I don't know if I'm going to finish it anytime soon because I just don't feel like working on it. I tried to write a novel, short stories, poems, I, I mostly tried to write short stories this year but they've just not fucking come out. I can't get them to come out. So it's just really hard when you're going through a dry spell and you just don't want, you know, anybody who's listening to this who writes or tries to write or uh, is a writer but can't put shit out on time, you know, they, they know what I'm talking about when I say it's, it's just, it's really, it's just really difficult to put shit out, like, you know, to stay relevant. Like, even when it comes to Twitter, I, I don't like posting shit that's, like, clever, like, every day, because it, it gets fucking old. But once a week is fine, but it's, that's not good enough for, you know, the fans nowadays in our um, hyper, super fast, you know, super highway culture of all the millennial kids. Like, you know, everything's got to be really quick. That's why memes are so popular, because they just bang them out like nothing. Like, everything's got to be banged out quickly. Especially if, you know, you're not famous or whatever. You know, it's just the, you're expected to be on the ball all the time. Everything's fast, you know, because of the fucking cell phones, like what I'm recording the Chuck's Do On show on right now for the After Hours segment. Like, every, everything's got to come out. Like, it's like everything's got to come out every Friday. Or we put out something every fucking Monday and every Thursday. Or, you know, a new thing will come out, you know, here and there. And, you know, we'll do this, this, and this. You know, it's just it's too much for me. It's too much. 
like Dr. Book is always telling me, he's like, dude, you gotta, like, people are following you, but you gotta keep up on it. Like, you have to, you have to retweet something from somebody with your, with a, your own comment, or you gotta put out a picture, you gotta put out, like, a drawing, you gotta put out, like, a, you gotta put out, like, um, promos for your book, you gotta put out promos for these videos, like, for the Chuck Stew show, you know, he was, like, saying, like, you gotta keep that shit up on Twitter, because people just, you know, they gotta, they gotta have it now, everything's now. So, you know, the, our, I call it the America's the microwave culture, put it like that, when it comes to entertainment. So, I mean, I don't see how my poems and stories are that entertaining, but, you know, it's been, it's been, pretty, it's been pretty good. I'm going to bullshitters tonight, going to be playing some pool, you know, drink some booze, eat, hanging out while they're going to sing karaoke. I'm going to watch my girlfriend, her, uh, her karaoke friend sing. I'm going to have to learn some songs. And sing. I may even sing tonight if I get drunk enough. But then it's like I don't know how we're gonna get home if I drink. So, um, and then I gotta leave tomorrow. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna leave tomorrow, probably right around 11 or 12. I'm gonna tell. Um, I'm gonna tell my girlfriend Nancy. You know, I gotta leave because uh, I want to get to work on time. So, even though I think tomorrow's a casual day, I gotta be there instead of 4:30. I gotta be there at four, and it's a two hour, two and a half hour drive to get back. So. You know, we'll just, we'll see. But anyways, so that's what's going on, folks. It's going to be the book of those two books. It's going to be the Haiku Collection. I'm really going to truck and try to push it for the next three months. I'm really going to try my best to make sure that shit comes out. Like, uh, which should be pretty easy because I'm going to work five days a week. So that's already guaranteed ten haikus per week because I have to write at work. I can't not write at work it's really difficult to not write so at, you know when I'm at work write and read I mean it's because of the the calls that I take are just, the, the center in itself it's easy money it's just but it's really fucking boring so anyways um, I'm gonna be doing that and uh, actually I gotta get some water next um, I'm just gonna be trucking along and just try to do that man just, that's gonna come out so that's, um, those things are going to be coming out, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a good time. I mean, it's, once it hits January 1st, it's like when Pontius Pilate, you know, he said, I washed my hands, you know, with the whole thing with Jesus, and, you know, the Sanhedrin kept yelling crucify him, so he did it, but, um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to relax for the whole year. I'm not going to have a focus of like, oh, no, this has to come out, this has to come out, like, I have to push myself to write this or it's not going to come out. Like, I've been feeling that stress for the last three years, and I just I need to take a break. So, I mean, Bukowski took a break for ten fucking years, and the only reason he came back, you know, he was writing four to five short stories a week, and then he quit at the age of 25. He was doing it from, like, 21 to 25, something like that, or maybe 22 to 25. And then he quit until age 35. And then so, um, he... <laughs> He almost died from having his liver get ripped open from drinking too much whiskey. And then when he when he was in the hospital or when he was coming out of the hospital, you know, after he was about to die, you know, thank God his dad donated blood, um, you know, blood points or whatever the fuck they called it. Um, when he did that, when he came out, he was, ty he was typing his typewriter and everything was just coming out poetry. It's probably because he had like a midlife crisis thing scared the hell out of him. So he, and he took a break. He called it 10 drunk years. He took t a 10 fucking year break from writing. And that dude has put out more than 50 fucking books. Like, that's a lot. So, my thing is, I was just going to put out a book every year until I die. So, if I live to age, let's say, 120, and I'm 28 now, and I already put out three books, it's a lot of fucking books. It's like I had 100 fucking books. So, you know, mouth's getting a little dry here. My phone did not go off yet, and it's already been 21 minutes into the show. This is going to be another long episode. So maybe you've blown both of these. Ugh. Oh, that's gross. I don't think anybody's drinking out of this. Oh. Oh, that Coca Cola's nasty. Well, my girlfriend's place with her roommates 
When it comes to the food, it looks like my parents' house. There's a shit ton of food, but there's nothing to eat. Anyways. So, yeah, that's, um, that, that's what I'm doing. That's what Chuck Stew's doing now. We're going to be coming out with the third season again. So, the third season may be our last season, but we found it. Me and the book were talking about this last night before he went over to, um, before he went with a girlfriend over to a party that he's going to jump, we're both going to jump on Skype and I'll just record from my computer or he can record from his computer and then we're going to record Skype, but we're still going to do it in the way that we always do it where it's going to be from audacity. It's just, you'll be able to hear both our voices, even though we're going to be two and a half hours away, six months from now. Cause when me and my girlfriend move in together and we get that apartment at Deer Valley, that's 50, about 15 minutes from here where her job is once we get that apartment we're actually going to be using skype to do season four of the chuck stew show so, not anymore um we actually don't even know if there's going to be a gimmick for this season i think we're just going to do the same thing we did for the first season we're going to be doing but we're going to be doing a mix it just depends on what we feel like doing on the weekend um so we're going to be still be doing the um the talks, like we're going to have a 10 minute talk of a conspiracy theory of whatever, or even re, uh, or even go back to some conspiracy theories. Then we're going to be doing our news segment, the what the fuck segment, and then we're going to do the after hour segment, like what we're doing right now. And then after that, we're just going to record, we're going to do 30 minute or 40 minute episodes, and we're just going to record after that of just the Chuck Stew show, but it's just you hear us in the background doing things and talking and yelling and whatnot. So it's going to be a mix of, you know, both those together. So, you know, you can listen to the first 30 minutes of the show if you can't, or, you know, if you hate the fact that we're always all, we've been all over the place with the last season, you know, going with like two to two and a half hours of just screaming and hooping and hollering. So at least for the first, thir the first 30 minutes, and we're going to try to do three commercials, um, basically a commercial every 10 minutes, but then that's it after the last 30 minutes or after the last segment of where we do the conspiracy theories and maybe have a guest come on the show, then we're going to just, it's just going to go all fucking crazy into the stratosphere. So season three, every season has 15 episodes. So season three of the Chuck Stew Show is going to be... Um, well, we just started last week. We're not going to be doing it this weekend, like I was saying in the last segment. We're not doing it this weekend because uh, me and my girlfriend had plans last night. We have plans tonight, so we're not going to be releasing an episode this week. We're going to release one next week, and then after that, we're going to steadily make sure or try to make sure that an episode comes out every Saturday. So just you got to stay tuned for that. you got to stay tuned for it. My girlfriend should be home in like 45 minutes. Let's see, we're at the 25 minute mark, so it's already been an hour for the after hour segment. And, um, you know, just talking, I mean, I'm just talking about, you know, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to do this when I come to see my girlfriend once a month. I drive down to Phoenix once a month, I drive back. Sometimes I come down here, like if a friend doesn't feel like driving, um, down to Tucson to hang out with us. Sometimes she just doesn't feel like doing it. You know, she's tired from her job. She just wants to have a relaxing weekend with her parents or her friends. So sometimes I'll even come down every two weeks and come pick her up and then drive her back. I already got 160,000 miles on my car. Once it hits 250,000, I'm selling it for parts and just want to go get a new car. Anyways, so that's just how that's going to work. Anywho. So you know, I'm probably going to end up, I mean, it's probably going to take another year to get up to 250,000 miles to rack it up for driving that fucking long and driving that much. And you know, the thing that, the thing that really sucks about living in the desert, I mean, I'm, I'm used to it. I mean, we're actually planning on going back to the Bay next April because uh, we're actually all going to be going on a road trip all the way down to San Francisco and then coming back, but we're going to, you know, do some stops in some different places. Actually, we're going to Pomona in, like, two months, but it's like an hour from here. Anyways, so we're going to be doing that, and, you know, the, so I don't know where I was going with that, but the Chuck Sue show is going to be continuing. I have to get shit off my chest, and this, I have to do this if I'm 
going to be hanging out. I mean, I've been here by myself because her friend went to his, um, the guy I was hanging out with last night before me and uh, Nancy went to dinner, Nancy Honey. Uh, she was on the first episode of Chuck's Two Show of Season 2. She's a special guest. Anyways, uh, we are going to be going, or he went down to go hang out with his mother and his sisters for the weekend. And the other one went to her parents all day uh, because she wanted to spend time with her parents. And she had to do schoolwork of uh, grading papers and whatnot. So that left me here for the last two days, like kind of like what we always do, except the last like two and a half months, every time I've been coming down here every well, coming down here once a month is I come down here on Saturday, get here by Saturday night, and then I would leave Tuesday morning after I drop my girlfriend off at work. So what I would do is basically just, I have the entire house to myself all fucking day. And I usually write. I usually just take this time to work on my short stories or work on my novel, because I was actually writing a ninth novel when I was coming down here the last couple months that I named Kentucky Fried Girlfriend, and it was going to be my autobiography that I was going to try to do again. I got seven pages done, and now I don't want to do it anymore. And that's going to go on the short story compilation, the short story uh, one. So that's what I'm going to be doing. This has been the Chuck Stew Show.